Hello everyone this is Ritesh here and I have two special guests with me uh we have Anuj Sharma CMO of uh, Xiaomi India and we also have uh, Pablo with us he is the head of development and product engineering for mobile at Leica so hey Anuj and Pablo welcome to the show so Xiaomi and Leica partnership has been there uh, for like a couple of years or maybe more than that now and one of the interesting things over here is that it's a co-engineering partnership so can you talk about the specifics of uh, how leica helped uh, xiaomi uh, with all the engineering efforts that went into making this phone from like lenses to the sensor and so on yes of course uh, to start uh, we sit together for the concept of the device so to agree on the camera part of the uh, of the of each device that we co-engineer and uh, since the very very, uh, very beginning uh, the concept has to be clear and agreed between the two parties so once the the concept is ready uh, what do we want to do with this device uh, who is the, the target group uh, for for this uh, device then we start thinking about the hardware components uh, what is the state of the art what is the best we can uh, give to our users once we decide on that, uh, we start with the development, the development of the, the camera system uh, from the very beginning. The, the lenses, we co-design the lenses with Xiaomi, and that's a very important part. That's, uh, let's say, that it's uh, the first step uh, in photography, the light uh, intake. It's uh, um, somehow um, shaped by the lenses, and um, so, this is the, the very uh, the very first step: lens design, lens co-design, and a lens evaluation. So once the the design is done, the design is something theoretical, but we have to be sure that those lenses can be manufactured and that the the yield is good enough so that uh, we don't run into imperfections. Let's say. Uh, apart from the lenses, we also uh, take a very close look at the sensors. Uh, for example, for the Xiaomi 14. Uh, uh, Xiaomi was able to prepare a, a customized sensor, uh, the Light Fusion 900, and uh, that's very important also for us. It's, it's the second step. After the lenses, the sensor is capturing all the light. Once we, we decide on the, on the sensor, uh, there's also the discussion about the camera module itself, which includes not only the sensor and the lenses, but also the, the motor for focusing, and in the case of the 14 Ultra, for example, also a variable aperture. So all these uh, parts, all these components have to be chosen carefully, and uh, there's a lot of research behind it. Once we have the, the camera components or, or the full camera module itself uh, and its manufacture, we evaluate uh, the quality, if it really meets the standards that we, or the specification that he, we had agreed on uh, beforehand. Then uh, once the hardware is validated, we, we continue into the tuning part. So what has to be done on, on the ISP, uh, on, the, on the chipset itself, on the image uh, signal processor, so that the final image quality is the one that we are uh, expecting. And uh, after doing all that uh, ISP tuning, uh, we of course conduct a lot of testing uh, of the final image quality. And it's done uh, in both in, in labs for doing the objective testing, uh, in which there's different metrics uh, measure and uh, we have to guarantee that those fit the specification and at the same time there's a lot of uh, natural scene or random testing which is basically going outside or going to multiple scenarios also inside it doesn't have to be outside um, where the users usually encounter challenging situations for photography and we make sure that those uh, those uh, scenarios are also covered correctly with what we expect the final image quality should be so for doing all of that, we have uh, a group of engineers that travel between the different, uh, uh, how do you say it, the different uh, locations where we have the labs. So uh, we have labs in Shenzhen, we have labs in Beijing, and we have labs also in Wetzlar in Germany. So our engineers, uh, with, uh, with the Xiaomi engineers, depending on the project, depending on the timings, they meet in one of uh, the three locations. To, to guarantee that the, the development of the devices is going for, uh, forward. 
Uh, Anush, anything you want to add? I think Pablo just spoke about the fact how extensive this partnership is, right? And I just wanted to kind of put that in because I keep getting this question saying there are multiple partnerships that are out there. How does it really differ? So if I could probably put this as, you know, there are obviously certain brand licensing that happens with uh, certain manufacturers. Uh, it's, it's essentially a marketing partnership. Then you've got, in some cases, it's a step up and you have a bit of help on tuning coming in. But what Pablo just spoke about, you know, this is a complete co-engineering partnership uh, that's obviously uh, almost two and a half, three years, uh, coming up to three years in uh, uh, the way that the teams have been working, but it's just the start. So there's a whole lot of new, cool camera tech that you'll continue to see uh, when it comes to this co-engineering partnership. Great. And uh, I mean, Leica is known for its cameras, right? And uh, we have uh, all those big lenses and everything. So how challenging was it to get all that tech in a compact and a small form factor? Yeah, as you say, the the, the big cameras don't have the challenges of the, the smartphones. Miniaturization is the key aspect here. And uh, getting the same image quality on on a tiny lens, let's say, uh, or lens system, it's a it's a real challenge. Our engineers, uh, with the help of the engineers from Xiaomi, work very hard to get that miniaturization done. Uh, of course, there are um, trade offs in in this regard, uh, and we work really hard to get those uh, those trade offs, which can be, for example, chromatic aberration on the lenses. Uh, as minimized as possible, and when there is, when we know that there's no more possibility of keep optimizing the lens, then we have to make sure that those lenses uh, really uh, are to the standards of quality of Leica. So it's a, a tough process, right. uh, but in the end, we are happy that the the, the, the devices are able to get uh, the quality that the users deserve. Then on the smartphones, uh, you also have. Uh the Leica authentic and vivid modes, right? So Leica is known for its color science. So how uh, challenging or, you know, how, how was it uh, getting all that tuning to this uh, every smartphone mm -hmm. that is powered by Leica uh, yeah, lenses? Uh, first of all, sorry, it's uh, Leica vibrant and Leica authentic. Mm -hmm. I know that we have Leica vivid in our cameras. Yeah. Uh, but for the smartphones, we, we chose a, a different naming. Um, the two styles, since we, since we started cooperating, we based or we did a, a really truthful analysis of the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra. Right. And we came to the conclusion that we had to uh, develop two different styles. Right. The one that is more tailored for the, let's say, a standard user that is uh, aiming for social media, for sharing the files, uh, sharing those images. And uh, the like authentic, which is the one that is more faithful to, uh, let's say, standard photography or, or uh, system camera photographies. Um, for the like authentic, uh, I mean, we got a lot of feedback uh, from users. This is also always very important from all kinds of users, from the enthusiast to the professionals to the standard user. And uh, we developed those uh, two styles in accordance to their needs. So it's a, it was also a difficult process because usually, let's say that some people will have done just a filter on top of it, but uh, in this case, it's not a filter. It's a whole separate tuning that happens at, at the ISP level, uh, and it's done uh, in a way that we get the best out of the ISP, out of the whole system for each of the, the target users, let's say. So now with this partnership, how has it helped both the brands uh, for Leica also to reaching new smartphone users and also for Xiaomi to reach the ultra premium segment as well? Sure. I'll probably start from a Xiaomi perspective and then uh, Pablo can do this. Uh, so for us, you know, when we were looking at what our consumers uh, aspiring for, and the main difference that starts coming in is in terms of camera. Uh, the smartphones have become a primary device for content creation, for capturing, for sharing. Uh, it just made sense that, you know, while 
the rest of the, the specs can be easily done, right? So we obviously have great partnerships with uh, a couple of other uh, brands out there. So you can get a great chip, you can get a great display, but camera is the toughest part to get. And this is a part where when we were looking at how do we kind of give it the best, the absolute best, or if I would probably prioritize, you know, what the 14 Ultra is, the pinnacle of smart, uh, imagery that you can get on a smartphone, uh, it just made sense to tie up with the best in terms of camera uh, you know, optics out there. So that's where the partnership with Leica comes in. And uh, this is where the gap versus what a Xiaomi gives starts kind of going beyond what everyone else is giving. So the gap is increasing, which makes it a lot more easier for us to get new customers in areas where we've not had before. So it just makes, makes perfect business sense, but obviously you know, we're very happy with you know the output and what uh, Pablo just spoke about, that you can get like authentic or vibrant modes. Uh, that kind of a color tuning, that color science, uh, you cannot get from any other device, which again puts the Xiaomi devices on a pedestal where nobody can really touch that. Yeah, regarding uh, reaching more, uh, I mean, more audience, as you said, uh, uh, the aim of Leica is always to enable people to capture moments uh, the best way possible. Uh, getting to these new segments, uh, it's uh, also a priority for Leica because uh, we want to share uh, with the world uh, our vision of photography. Great. And just before we wrap this up, AI has been a hot topic, right? So how does AI play a role uh, in getting the best image quality? Well, AI helps a lot in different aspects of photography, uh, from the capturing to the processing to the editing, let's say. Uh, with these uh, last devices, we have focused uh, a lot on the editing part, the after the capturing, but there is uh, still some stuff done uh, before the capture and in the processing. So at Leica, our, our stand is that uh, AI is going to help a lot, but we are very careful in, sen in the sense of um, AI must not introduce artifacts uh, or artificial elements that were not there in the, in the photography itself. So of course, uh, it's, it's going to be the future, but uh, we, we take a conservative approach to it. Anish? I, I... I have like a love hit thing with uh, AI. Uh, so, you know, I want obviously AI coming in to enhance aspects. Uh, so yesterday we spoke about the whole ultra zoom that you get on the 14 ultra, right? This is going beyond what the optical capabilities of that small smartphone can do and helps you get a better image. But if it starts changing that image, uh, then it's not really authentic photograph, right? It's more of a creative. You could have done that on Photoshop. Uh, so AI is good to have if it enhances that image and gets you closer to the realism where you can't, uh, there are certain aspects of physics that you can't achieve with uh, the smartphone. But if it creates a new element, if it's something different from what that scenario was, uh, that's not really a photograph in my head, right? So we'll have to be careful, uh, toe the line, uh, but let's see. It's evolving really quickly. Uh, I don't know where we will be next year this time. Great. Uh, so thank you for both of your time. I think we can wrap this up. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.